Hey class, so I just wanted to go over a couple of ways, three ways to be exact, um, to add texture to individual pieces of your model. Now, I don't want you to go overboard with this. Um, you definitely have stylized models, so too much texture makes it a little too realistic, but um, check out these ways. So the first way is going to our surface menu activating noise and then adding a cloth alpha and i'm giving you a folder of cloth alphas that you can use um, or you can just search on google for cloth alphas free tileable and that will help so i'm just going to use this bandeau top that i'm still not entirely happy with um, and then go down in your tool menu to surface and then there's this whole thing called noise. So let's click on that. And what you're gonna see immediately is the noise that is just generally present in the surface because nothing is 100% smooth. ZBrush has tiny bits of like regular noise. So you can see that there's like different weaves. There's kind of random kind of textures. This one's quite good number eight for my purposes at least um, and these are just general like I would say generally woven fabrics not meant to be huge not meant for a bunch of displacement but just kind of a little extra to be added to your model so I'm going to try this I may try um, I'm just looking through all of these There we go. Okay, and right when I hit open, you can see a tiny preview on the bottom left, as well as more of a general preview. Now, if I hit okay, you can see what the effect is immediately. So that's noise. And then if you wanna go back in and edit it, click edit. If you wanna select a different alpha, go into this corner alpha on and off, and I'm gonna select the other one that I liked. It has kind of a cool pattern on it. Now there's a few modifiers that you can use. So there's like size, scale, um, strength is a good one. If you slide to the right and the left, you can kind of see how much it um, creates displacement. So that one's a good one to play with. This one's also a very good one to play with. So basic noise is noise that's added in by ZBrush. So if you have a pattern that you're really into, um, you wanna reduce that basic noise. And then um, there's two kind of color boxes here, and those are mixing of this color blend. So I can change um, the second color to be whatever I like, and you can also affect that first color. I'm just trying to give us get a slightly browner mix. There we go. And you can also affect this noise curve right below it. All of these are just going to take some playing with. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. And I bet there's a ton of YouTube tutorials that can um, illuminate this a little more. Um, these can make adjustments to rotation there we go i kind of like this just by default so now if i hit okay let's check it out so i actually really like that um, i think it's pretty cool and would work for certain kinds of textures um, let's look at our second way for the second method, I'm gonna to go to the collar and um, I'm going to go back to surface and click on noise again. And this time you can see with my model right there, I'm not gonna click on alpha. I'm instead just going to play around with existing um, noise that you can just kind of play with the settings on. So you can also 
get pretty significant noise ranges just by using these options. There you go. And then clicking on the noise plugin, which is right above this noise scale. So the noise plugin, once you click that, it may take a second. It has a bunch of different options for this noise maker that we're using. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't have a ton of great luck with this, but I think it could be super interesting and I have seen um, some options that looked pretty cool. Generally, you're gonna want to UV these, or you can UV these. I will show you how to UV eyeballs in a different tutorial. Um, when I was trying to UV this particular piece, it was giving me trouble, so um, I will have to make that a different UV tutorial. Basically, um, ZBrush has a bunch of UV options um, in its Z plugin UV master. And for some reason it just wasn't working for me. Okay. The final way is going to go to the light box and noise makers. And so pre-built into light box, are a bunch of noise um, noise options that you can play with. There's like polka dots and um, kind of this, I feel like it's almost a tree option or marble or something, but you can play with the scale and the rotation for this and get some kind of interesting effects. Um, I'm not 100% sold on this, but I think it, it works a little bit. So this could potentially work. I'm, I'm not 100% sold. But on it really depends on your concept art. Okay, so for the last one, I'm gonna grab another um, noise maker and apply it to a different layer of the top. So go back to surface and light box noise makers. And I found this one um, weave, I think it is, that I thought could be kind of an interesting option. So I think I kind of got lucky with the scale, but I thought it kind of could be cool. Um, And again, you can see the actual alpha pattern that's already been preloaded when you use this noise maker option. And then you can scale the different, um, the different alpha sizes to give you kind of an interesting pattern. It's definitely not like the concept art, but it is kind of interesting. Um, the other thing I'm going to try and play with is this noise. So I think it's probably too much noise there. And then with the color. Okay, so once I have this, I'm actually going to use this SK Carve brush, which is pretty similar to like the um, mock brush, and it's just going to create some kind of indents. Notice that it is painting on color right now, and that is because right above um, Z intensity is RGB and for some reason it got turned on. So I do not want RGB to be affected, the RGB channel to be affected while I'm using my carve brush. And again, I'm just playing with some of the colors. Okay, and now I can use this carve brush to carve in some of these indents um, you can see it has Lazy Mouse. Lazy Mouse allows you to make smoother strokes. It kind of has this red line ahead of it or being dragged behind your cursor. And that's the Lazy Radius. Um, ZBrush has like an algorithm that try and tries to smooth within that radius. Um, and you can play with 
um, the lazy radius, making it larger or smaller depending on how um, accurate you are when you're drawing. I was not particularly accurate at this point in time, but that's okay. Just trying to add a little like three-dimensionality to this texturing. So this is three options that you can do um, and play around with if you like. 